Hi, everyone. My name is Eli Vlasovich. I'm an assistant professor in biomedical engineering and mechanics at Virginia Tech. And today I'm going to be giving a presentation on a brief overview of different focus ultrasound treatment modalities that are being developed for the treatment of cancer. So before we dive into the differences between types of focus ultrasound, it's important to note the commonality. So focus ultrasound is a completely non-invasive method in which sound waves are delivered to a precise point inside the body, um, guided by real-time imaging. At the focus, the sound waves can interact with the target tissue and array and induce a range of bio effects that we'll talk about today. So although many of you might be coming to this workshop to discuss the effects of focus ultrasound on cancer in the immune system, it's important to realize that focus ultrasound is a broad field that encompasses many different therapies utilizing focus ultrasound. So as you can see from the example waveforms on the right, ultrasound can be applied with very low pressures and low acoustic intensities, similar to ultrasound imaging, all the way up to very high acoustic pressures and intensities that we use for ablation. So although I'm not going to spend a lot of time today talking about the different parameters involved in these focus ultrasounds, such as frequency, pressure, cycles, pulsing rates, et cetera, um, for simplicity, I'll just be kind of breaking these up based on the pressure amplitude and intensity of, of the various uh, uh, treatment modalities. Um, so as you can see from this list, we can typically divide focus ultrasound modalities into thermal therapies that induce localized heating in the tissue through the absorption of ultrasound, kistotripsy therapy, which uses acoustic cavitation, to destroy the tissue non-thermally, and finally, other low-intensity focus ultrasound um, methods that use focus ultrasound in combination with artificial agents or directly at much lower intensities. So first, we're going to be looking at thermal uh, therapies, um, and the, the largest amount of work in this is high-intensity focus ultrasound, or HIFU, which has been in development for the long time, and HIFU uses continuous wave pulsing or high-duty cycles uh, at very high intensities in order, you know, these range from 100 to 10,000 watts per centimeter squares. Um, and, and like all focus ultrasound, it's you know, focused to a single point in the body and results in the rapid heating of the target tissue to greater than 60 C, resulting in the thermal ablation of the target. So in order to guide and monitor the, these procedures, MRI thermometry is often used. You can see from the image on the bottom right, the high precision of HIFU um, in a neurological procedure. So as mentioned, the mechanism of HIFU is rapid tissue heating resulting in thermal necrosis. HIFU is similar to other thermal ablation methods, such as radio frequency and microwave in this mechanism of action, except that HIFU is completely non-invasive. So when we look histologically, you can see that HIFU lesions are observed to be characterized by complete cell necrosis, as well as thermal den denaturation of proteins and other tissue structures, similar to what we see with other thermal ablation. HIFU is currently being developed for liver, renal, pancreatic, prostate, and other cancers um, in the clinic. So in addition to HIFU, focus ultrasound can be used for mild hypothermia. Here, the mechanism of action is the same, but the tissue is only heated to sublethal levels around 40, 40 to 45 C. So hypothermia has been shown to induce a range of reported bioeffects, including enhanced blood flow, expression of heat shock proteins, inhibition of DNA repair, and enhanced drug delivery. It's also used as a sensitizer for you know, other therapies such as radiation and chemotherapy. So next, we're going to change gears and talk about histotripsy. So histotrips is a completely non-invasive and non-thermal ablation method that uses focus ultrasound to generate a cavitation bubble cloud, which results in the mechanical ablation of the tissue into an acellular debris with very high precision. So before I talk about the bioeffects, I just want to mention that there are three different types of histotripsy that have developed. Intrinsic threshold histotripsy uses single cycle pulses at very high pressures, greater than 25 megapascal peak negative pressure. Shock scattering uses multi-cycle pulses between five and 20 cycles with peak negative pressures about, you know, on orders of uh, 10 to 15 megapascals, and then boiling histrips are used as 5 to 10,000, you know, much longer pulses with slightly lower pressures in order to rapidly heat the tissue and generate a boiling bubble. So in all of these cases, it's important to note that histrips uses very low duty cycles in order to uh, avoid any thermal damage to the tissue. So it's a non-thermal mechanical effect that's generated from these bubbles that are formed at the focus of the transducer. So here's an example of some bubble clouds generated in intrinsic threshold histrips. And again, this is in the literature, this is often referred to as microtipsy as well, so those, those terms are used interchangeably. But in intrinsic threshold histripsy, these single cycle pulses are used to generate a precise and dense cavitation bubble cloud that can be tailored based on the acoustic parameters. And this gives us high precision, so we can really uh, match the size of this bubble cloud as, as well as other properties of the bubble cloud or to selectively tailor treatments uh, for, for different targets of interest. Uh, in shock scattering histripsy, you, you see a dense cavitation bubble cloud is formed through this process we term shock scattering. And this involves basically scattering of a positive pressure off of initial bubbles that are formed during the pulse. This generates very high peak negative pressures 
that constructively interfere as, as these kind of uh, co-propagating waves move back towards the transducer, generating this dense bubble cloud that you see here. And so the pressure, because of this process, the pressure is lower than what's required for uh, intrinsic threshold hysteroscopy. And finally, in boiling hysteroscopy, we're using much longer pulses to rapidly heat the tissue to about 100 degrees Celsius or around that range. And this generates a, a boiling bubble uh, cloud at the focus. It's important to note that these boiling bubbles are nucleated through rapid heating. But because the overall duty cycle is low, you're not getting an actual thermal effect on the tissue itself. And the bio effect is still a non thermal ablation due to these bubbles interacting with the tissue. So now that we've talked about the three types of hysteropsy, I want to walk through the ablation process. So as I've said, hysteropsy generates this a cavitation bubble cloud inside the tissue, and it's the rapid expansion and collapse of these bubbles that exerts high stress and strain on the target tissue, as shown in the video in the middle here. This results in a really high precision, almost a binary treatment effect between the ablated and non-ablated tissues. And these tissues are Again, non-thermally ablated into an acellular liquid debris with proteins inside the ablation region, you know, not being denatured as you see with thermal ablation, but rather remaining intact and kind of liberated within this kind of liquefied uh, tissue volume that contains no more viable cells. So another important feature of hystripsy that's a direct result of being this non-thermal ablation is the ability to treat near critical structures while preserving those structures. So here I'm showing some example images of hystripsy treated near blood vessels, bile ducts, and nerves while preserving those structures. So this is a feature that we think is extremely promising for the treatment of tumors located in high risk locations. Um, and I just want to end the hystripsy section by you know, just highlighting that hystripsy remains relatively newer folk sulfone ablation method. It's currently in clinical trials for the treatment of liver cancer. And my group and others are doing preclinical research um, on a, a wide range of cancers, you know, such as pancreas, brain, renal, so soft tissue sarcoma, osteosarcoma, and, and many others. So it's an emerging research area and uh, moving into the clinic now, but it, it isn't as established as the thermal hyper that we talked about earlier. So finally, I just want to end by talking about a large group of other therapies that use low intensity focus ultrasound uh, in order to uh, uh, cause some effect in the body. Um, and I'll be referring to all these as LIFU, in, in uh, my talk today, but some other terms are used in the literature, such as LOFU, pulse focus ultrasound, and others. So, just to make note of that. Uh, so, LIFU uh, uses low intensity focus ultrasound. Um, this is, you know, on the order of what's used in ultrasound imaging or close to it, rather than these very high intensity we've been talking about so far. So, LIFU can induce mild heating as well as generate mechanical effects through acoustic radiation force or cavitation. And this can result in a range of bioeffects, such as mechanical tr transduction. Uh, inducing inflammation and transient release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, enhancing circulation, disrupting tissue, enhancing permeability, and improving drug delivery, uh, amongst others. So many of these uh, life examples I'm going to show today uh, also are used in combination with artificial agents such as stabilized microbubbles, liposomes, fluid-filled particles, or gas-stabilizing particles. Uh, so first, uh, before we get into some of those artificial agents uh, in combination with LIFO, I just want to mention that there's a, a variety of experiments showing the bioeffects of using LIFO directly on uh, cancer, cancer treatment. So more recently, uh, so first, uh, you know, things like uh, decreasing cell proliferation, um, and then more recent work actually using LIFO in, you know, and, and optimizing parameters in vitro uh, through a term that they're calling oncotripsy, which is really, uh, you know, basically destroying the cells by uh, their they're basically uh, disrupting the actin cytoskeleton and activating more apoptotic cell death pathways rather than necrosis. And um, this is really promising initial studies that have been going on. Um, but again, it's just emphasizing that there's a lot of different bioeffects of life and procedures. Um, and these are just a couple of examples of, of things in the literature. Um, so when you combine life in combination with artificial agents, you can get a wider range of bioeffects. So, the, the most widely used is life in combination with microbubbles in order to reversibly open the blood brain barrier in order to enhance drug delivery for the treatment of brain tumors and other neurological disorders. In addition, uh, sonodynamic therapy uses life in combination with microbubbles as well as various sonosensitizer molecules in order to produce cavitation and generate free radicals, leading to the death of rapidly dividing cancer cells. Uh, another application, um, variety of uses of life for drug delivery, either directly or in combination with artificial agents. So for instance, uh, the, the uh, citation here for ultrasound propelled nanocups actually uses uh, solids, uh, gas stabilizing nanoparticles 
that can basically generate cavity tissue and enhance drug delivery into a tissue. So really promising results um, for a variety of studies using LIFU for, for drug delivery. Um, changing gears from drug delivery, another combination therapy of LIFU is acoustic droplet vaporization. So ADV uses fluid-filled nano droplets that typically consist of a low boiling point for, for fluorocarbon that can be triggered by ultrasound to non-invasively generate gas bubbles. And one promising application of ADV, uh, amongst others, uh, I show the images here, is the non-invasive generation of gas emboli within vasculature surrounding a tumor. So this ADV embolization approach is being used for the treatment of tumors directly, as well as showing a lot of promise for combination with other therapies. Uh, such as chemotherapy approaches for, for really improving the effectiveness of those therapies. And then finally, my group and others are developing nanoparticle mediated dystrophy methods for a targeted and selective ablation of cancer cells. These particles are very similar to ADV, except we're using different parameters to basically selectively generate hystrophic cavitation bubbles from these particles at much lower pressures than what we talked about earlier. Um, so to summarize, I hope this talk gives you an appreciation for the wide range of focus ultrasound therapies and bioeffects that can be induced by focus ultrasound. Although as a workshop here, we're talking about focus ultrasound, broadly speaking, and how it impacts the immune system. It's important for all of us to remember that this is, focus ultrasound is not a one-trick pony. And it can, instead can be used for a wide range of applications and bioeffects that we can utilize as different tools in this you know, fight against cancer. So um, I want to just, you know, mention that all the work I talked about today is really a simplification. There's each one of these is really uh, a wide field that has a lot of great research. So I would encourage everybody to follow up with uh, people who are working in these fields or, or ask me. I'm happy to talk more and, and get into the details of the differences between these various therapies. But hopefully this gives you a general overview of the different types of focus ultrasound and appreciation for kind of how wide the field is. And I want to thank everybody who, uh, uh, whose work I showed in this presentation, and I, I wish everybody the best as you continue to develop these different uh, focus ultrasound methods for, for treating cancer. So thank you for your time, and I hope uh, we, you enjoy the rest of the workshop, and I, I look forward to interacting with you all. Thank you.